When it comes to the final weapon in Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, you're gonna spend a lot of time grinding for that weapon. So I'm gonna cover a few boss fight mechanics to help this clear easier for you. But I also have a massive tip that's gonna save you hours of grinding. So if you're not to the boss fight yet or you wanna avoid spoilers, just stick around for this first portion. I promise you won't regret it. And I'll let you know before we get into the fight so that way you can leave if you don't want any spoilers. Let's go ahead and start with the tip. And honestly, this is the main purpose of me wanting to make this video to get this information out there to you as soon as possible. But yes, you're gonna have crewmate cards to allow you to unlock the rest of the roster. But unless you plan to immediately play with those characters, I wouldn't recommend doing it. And so I unlock Nermaya, Cagliostro, and I don't play with those characters at all. And so the reason you're not gonna wanna do this is because when you're farming your final weapon, that pool is going to be by all of the characters that you have currently unlocked. And so right now, I can't get the weapon for Siegfried, Percival, Lancelot, Yadahara, Zeta. And so that's going to increase the chances of me getting that Terminus main weapon drop for the character that I decide to main. At the end of the day, it's all RNG, but I want to get this weapon for Gondon Goza because he's the character that I primarily play. But I've gotten this weapon for Fairy, Charlotta, Vayne, and these are all characters that I do plan to play, but I've also got this weapon for Narmaya. Pretty much, I've got eight different weapons out of my 13 character roster, but I still haven't got it for Gondon Goza, so I have to go back into grinding. But had I not unlocked some of these other characters that I want to play in the future, there's a significantly higher chance that I would have got that drop for the main character that I plan to play. Yes, you have characters that are already unlocked by default and you can't get around that, but I feel like at this point, just having this strat is gonna save you hours of grinding. I can't even count how many times I've ran this boss just to try and get this weapon that I still haven't got yet. That's gonna be the most important piece of this video. So if that's what you're here for, or you wanna avoid spoilers, I recommend clicking off now because now we're gonna get into the nitty gritty of the fight and how to make this easier for you as you prepare to clear it to get that final weapon. First things first, you're gonna to wanna to have some type of quality of life sigils equipped. So I go with auto revive but I was lucky enough to also get some potion hoarders as a plus abilities for my five plus sigils. And so I recommend auto revive or potion hoarder especially, and then maybe going with some defensive type sigils or taking off tyranny so that way your HP is higher, just so that way you're not constantly getting one tapped unless you're just really like that <laughs> and you can do this without having to worry about that. This is just gonna give you some grace to make errors. I leveled up my Vayne explicitly to do this boss and clear it easily. I'll get into a little bit about that later, but Gondon Goza is the character that I'm primarily playing. But let's get into the boss mechanics. And now this fight can vary significantly depending on where you time your Skybound arts, how much DPS your party is doing, and is everyone on the same page? Because this is one of those things that is easy to clear if you're all on the same page, but if not, it can spiral out of control very easy and make this fight way more difficult than it needs to be. So to open up this fight, we're gonna have to have two people on the cannons and two people clearing the ships. And I recommend that if you're gonna be on the cannon, stay on that same cannon because it's gonna help cohesion in the future. Uh, but we'll get to that later. But you're just going to be essentially shooting these purple orbs down if you're on the cannons and especially the red orbs. If you do miss these, it's okay because you can guard against them but ideally you wanna be clearing all of these if you can. You're gonna to need to pay attention and be careful that the gun doesn't overheat because that may mess you up. And so that's when I recommend maybe alternating, alternating your charge shot to damage the boss and not necessarily using all of your ether rounds so that way the gun doesn't overheat. Now, if you're on the main deck, your job is pretty easy. You're just gonna be clearing these crystals, these purple crystals that spawn, which is relatively easy if you're a DPS character, but essentially you're gonna to get to the first phase where the boss is going to summon an orb and this is going to vary between any of the elements and each element will have a different effect if you don't clear it fast enough. The fire element is going to drop a meteor. It's going to be very slow so you can just move that away from the crystal so that way you can continue DPSing after or you don't get anyone else on your party wiped. The wind element is just going to spawn a tornado. The ice element is going to spawn icicles that are going to shoot things at you. I would say pretty much most of them you can DPS through aside from the fire one, um, but these are gonna get significantly harder as they happen again later in the round. So I just wanted to explain the ones that there are available. And there's also one that's gonna spawn in the middle of the ship. And this is going to shoot fire waves um, that you're gonna have to jump over and DPS. I'm not 100% sure if that can spawn on this first one, but that is an option to spawn after the first one when the crystals do appear. But this is gonna be really a soft DPS check 
And on this one, you can afford to take your time to clear these because once we get to finishing DPS and these down, you pass the DPS check, the boss is gonna come to the ship. And this is gonna be one of the longer chances you get to DPS the boss when it's on the ship if you don't take any other strats into this fight. And so I usually save my cooldowns and my buffs for this to get all my DPS off before the boss returns back to the state. This is also gonna be a good chance to kind of gauge how much DPS your party has by how much you're able to burn this down from here. But after this, if you're on the cannons, you're gonna go back to the cannons. If you're clearing the orbs, you're gonna go back to clearing the purple orbs. But an important thing to note is that on this boss, at this phase, it's going to attempt to smash the cannons every single time and you can dodge this. Depending on what type of party has, you can run to the boss and DPS it down and try and get it to enter a link attack, but you have to have someone with high stun and the party has to be in coordination to actually get this off. And most of the time, you're not gonna be in coordination, but it's important to get straight back to the cannons as soon as you can after this, if you were a cannoneer, because that's when it's gonna spawn these um, light orbs that you need to DPS down. And I feel like a lot of times the party gets stuck trying to clear these purple orbs and they don't actually go to the cannons to DPS this down. And this is probably one of the first phases that you'll see a lot of parties take a lot of damage at or get killed. So make sure that you're attending to that. And then it's gonna kind of be rinse, wash, repeat. We're gonna have the orb spawn again. You're gonna kill these and it's gonna be the same elemental system that it was mentioned in the last portion, except for this time I believe is where that one in the center can start landing. Once you clear that, you're gonna break the boss. And this, you're not really gonna have much time to dish out DPS unless you have your Skybound art available, uh, which is really gonna vary by sigils and character to character. But this is gonna be really just a little bit of DPS and then it's gonna jump away from the mountain, or excuse me, the ship, and it's gonna perform its Skyfall ability. Now, it may not, it depends on your DPS, but this is usually gonna happen at 80% or whenever it crosses that 80% threshold. This skill is easy to dodge. You just run to the outsides. You just have to know whenever you see the dragon run all the way back, that's when Skyfall is about to happen and you just start making your way to the outside. But right after this, every single time, the boss is going to come into this phase. And as long as you go to the claw and start attacking, you don't have to worry about being hit by its fire breaths. And if you have any type of stun, usually you can get a link attack off here as well. And then it's gonna swipe as soon as it gets to that point. So that way you know, okay, I know to guard after this link attack to not take any damage from this. After that guard, it's gonna spawn the crystals again, but pretty much every time after this boss does the Skyfall ability at 80%, these crystals are gonna be significantly harder and significantly more important to clear fast with DPS. So I wouldn't really recommend saving abilities here because if you don't clear these fast enough, this is where things start to snowball and this boss can get significantly harder. It's going to also start swiping as well as potentially shooting light orbs into the party if you're not clearing it quick enough. But if you can clear it quick enough, that's something you don't have to worry about. At this point, most of the party should have their Skybound Arts maxed out. And this is where I see a lot of people pop their Skybound Arts, but there is a specific tech with this boss and you'll see three people pop their Skybound Art and then the last one will save it. And then as soon as the boss pulls up like it's about to leave, that's when that final person will drop their fourth Skybound Art. They will be doing this one solo, but it's important because it brings the boss back down to the ship to continually be in DPS by the party. And so this is a strat that's gonna save a lot of time and help you get way more DPS off, just because if you do your Skybound Art and everyone changes it to the first one, you're not gonna get that second wave where it gets pulled back to the boss. Now, this is another way where it can snowball in your favor if you take this strat, because odds are you're gonna be building your link meter. And if it's at 100%, you can also get a link time in at this point. And this is gonna skip a lot of phases of the fight because you're able to get so much DPS in. But that is something where it depends if your party is coordinated or not. Depending on your DPS, after this phase, the boss should be hitting about 50% where it's gonna do its supernova ability. Now, at a first portion, this ability might seem hard to dodge, but if you know what you're doing, it's gonna be easy and you're gonna be able to dodge it every time. The first portion of the attack is gonna be a large meteor in the center of the ship, so you're gonna to have to run to the corners anyways, and this is the strat that I take every time. I sit and either you're going to be hit to be the target of the next supernova ability, or you're gonna get it in the second phase, but regardless, the strategy is still the same. You're gonna look in the center and you're gonna wait for the supernova to hit the center, and as soon as it does, you're gonna to sprint to the middle. Now, if you wait until that center supernova's hit, 
By the time you sprint to the middle, if you're in the first wave, the supernova is going to drop off at the bottom half of the ship as you make your way to the middle, so you're not going to get anyone else in your party hit. Now, if you have the second wave of the supernova, you're going to get it now at this point. And it's the same strat. You're just going to sit and wait at the center of the ship, and you're going to wait for the supernova to hit the ship in front of you. And then as soon as it does, you're going to sprint towards the other side of the ship, and you're going to drop off the supernova damage like circle on your way to the end of the ship. And if you do this every single time, you don't have to worry about getting hit by this or getting your party wiped because you brought it onto them. You just have to get that timing right and it'll be about the same every single time. After this, the boss is gonna slap onto the ship where you can really just jump over this. You can attempt to DPS, but there's not gonna be that big of a window. And then the boss is gonna fly around and it's gonna prepare to start shooting its blue laser onto the ship. Now, there is some tech where depending on which cannoneer you are, you can get DPS off but if you're not super familiar with the fight and you don't want to chance anything, I always run to this corner or a corner and just start guarding. So that way I don't have to worry about getting one tapped by this ability. Yes, you could be missing out on some DPS by not hopping on the cannoneers, but at least you're not risking the chance of getting one tapped and getting your party wiped. But immediately after this, when the dragon flies back and it's done doing its blue beams, there's going to be yellow orbs that spawned. And at this point, everyone needs to go to a cannoneer and kill the yellow orb that's going to be in front of you and shoot it down. This is why I say it's important as cannoneers to stay in the exact cannon that you started with at the beginning. So that way there's no confusion and everyone knows which cannon they need to run to. And usually it'll just be the other two people who were attacking the purple orbs at the beginning of the fight that have to figure out which cannon they go to. But if you're separating the purple orbs in the beginning of the fight, by whichever side of the ship it spawns at is the person that's gonna wipe it. That's usually how people know which cannon they need to run to. But this is pretty easy once you have this mechanic down, you just shoot down the orb. A lot of times I'll move my cannon to the left to help the other person in case they missed it or my party is confused. And then after that, I'll run to the cannon behind me just in case they didn't get that hammered out. So that way I'm trying to cover as much room for failure that there is within my party as possible to make sure that we can progress. After this phase, the boss is gonna spawn another elemental diamond in the center, and you're gonna have to DPS this down, as well as deal with whatever element it is, and dodge the boss swiping onto the ship. And so if you have any type of invincibility abilities, now is gonna be the time to use them so that way you can focus on DPSing and not just dodging skills. This is primarily why I leveled up Vayne, so that way I can do the invincibility spear and my whole party can just focus on DPSing this down and I don't have to worry about depending on people to dodge abilities. And I feel like this is where a lot of parties wipe because there's a lot of room for error here, especially if you're running a character that doesn't have an invincibility. But once you manage to get this diamond down, that's gonna break the boss again. And this is gonna be another phase where you can get a significant amount of damage off. If you focus on attacking the horns of this boss, you can get it to break off, which is gonna give you extra rewards when you clear the mission, but that's really optional. And there is, if your party is all on point and everyone has the DPS, another chance that you might have your Skybound art here uh, to perform the strat that we mentioned earlier, or just pop it off so you guys can get more damage. After this, it's gonna repeat some of the same mechanics, but I've given you the resources that it takes to clear them. It's gonna be very important now though, when these elemental diamonds spawn, that you're clearing them as fast as possible using your biggest hitting skills on them, because you're gonna also have to worry about the boss swiping onto the ship and potentially shooting those orbs onto the ships since no one's able to mount the cannons because you're DPSing down these diamonds. But around this phase of the fight, your skybound art should be up and link time, which should be enough if your DPS is right to get you to the final phase of the fight, but if not, and you're in one of those parties that maybe doesn't have the DPS to push it that fast, it's okay. Just make sure you're taking advantage of your block because all of these skills are blockable and that's gonna avoid you from being one tapped. Even if a cannoneer misses shooting down something, if it hits the ship, you can just block and it's not really gonna do anything. You can continue about your day, but that's the main thing to do if you get maybe a party that's spiraling downhill is just take advantage of that block and know the core mechanics of the fight. Once you clear all of that, I believe it's either at sub 20% or sub 15%, the boss is gonna get to overdrive and now you're gonna move into the final phase of the fight. This is only gonna be a DPS check where you're gonna wanna make sure that you're clearing this before it runs out 
because I believe it wipes the entire party. But usually at this point, if you followed everything and you've been on point, this is really easy. I don't think I've ever failed this. That's why I don't know if it wipes the party or not. But if you're on your shit, this part should be easy. You're just popping your strongest abilities. I wouldn't really recommend. I know some people save their Skybound art specifically for this. I wouldn't recommend it because you're losing out on damage earlier in the fight. At this point, you'll either have link time or your Skybound art, though, if you decided to save it. Just make sure that you're clearing this. It's just a DPS check. And I think at this point in the game, everyone has the right sigils and is skilled enough to clear this. But if not, that's OK. Maybe you just had a bad run and you can try again. Link time is going to stop this bar as well as Skybound Arts as well. And that is why you see some people save it. You can't really control what other members in your party do. And maybe if you don't have the DPS, you could save it. But like I said, I personally wouldn't recommend it. That's going to cover everything you need for this fight. And pretty much beyond this point, it's just going to be running this over and over and over again. So that way you can unlock your Terminus weapon. And once you do, now is where the next grind begins to ascend that weapon and get the mats that you need.